Hello, my name is Yasmina Abdish and I'm the Chief Scientific Officer at Immunoprecise Antibodies. Thank you for taking the time to join us today, despite the extraordinary circumstances we are all facing with COVID-19. Over the years, I've enjoyed this annual antibody engineering meeting, and we at Immunoprecise are very grateful to the organizers for continuing its legacy in virtual form, giving us the opportunity to present to you today. This is our disclaimer, as this presentation will be making forward-looking statements. I'd like to start by giving you an overview of our history. IPA originated in Vancouver, Canada some 30 years ago, and over the past three years, we have transformed the company to a streamlined global operation with unprecedented expertise. We accomplished this through R&D and acquisitions of companies with complementary capabilities to provide our clients access to a suite of leading technologies for end-to-end -end drug discovery under our roof. Key acquisitions of the Dutch companies Uprotein Express and Modiquest Research expanded our protein production and phage display core competencies. In addition to our contract research organization services, we recently established our own internal pipeline called Talum and have aggressively emerged as a well-respected leader in the antibody discovery space. IPA's core strengths lie in the breadth of antibody discovery platforms that we offer and our depth of services, allowing us to take your research program from concept through to clinically fit leads. Scientific rigor is of utmost importance to us and we care deeply about the quality of our services so that our clients can be confident in gaining access to state-of-the-art technologies operated by highly skilled scientists with exceptional success rates. We have in-depth experience in generating antibodies using different platforms, including phage display, B-cell technology and hybridoma. We have ready to use fully human and complete repertoires available for panning, eliminating the need to wait for convalescent plasma donations. We can pan these libraries quickly to identify functionally relevant binders, even to difficult targets, such as multi-spanning membrane targets using careful panning strategies and high quality panning reagents, whether recombinant proteins or cell-based targets. We also have our own Naive Llama library displaying VHH fragments, which can be especially useful in accessing hard to reach epitopes. We are a preferred provider of the Omni suite of transgenic animals, and our B cell platform is adaptable to any species. We routinely work with immunized rabbits and omni rats. We have more than 30 years experience in hybridoma too. In addition to antibody generation, we have extensive capabilities in antibody characterization and engineering to optimize for developability. Our clients are a mixture of researchers in both the therapeutics and diagnostics industries. We can apply our methods to address any disease, protein type, or target class, and this is borne out by our high client retention and proven track record of serving the pharma and biotech industries. Why antibodies for COVID-19? Well, while a vaccine is a necessary end goal to stop viral transmission, Vaccines don't work for everyone because they rely on an individual launching a robust enough immune response to generate their own protective antibodies. This leaves a significant population of people vulnerable, especially those with weakened immune systems, such as people with chronic medical conditions, including heart, lung and autoimmune diseases, diabetes, HIV, cancer, solid organ transplant recipients and the elderly. Also, vaccines don't normally provide any clinical benefits to patients already infected. We believe 
that therapeutic antibodies can fill this gap and will play a critical role in combating COVID-19 because they can be administered to a broader population of individuals and can be effective when given pre or post infection. Indeed, the FDA has recently granted emergency use of some antibody treatments for newly infected individuals who are at risk of developing severe disease. From the onset of our COVID-19 program in January of this year, we set out to deliver a therapeutic antibody-based solution that would provide a safe and long-lasting protection against current and emergent variations of SARS-CoV-2. Using our suite of antibody discovery platforms, we quickly mobilized a parallel drug discovery effort across our global teams. We use multiple species, including rabbits, transgenic omni-rats, our pre-existing human libraries sourced from both healthy donors and autoimmune disease patients, and our naive llama library. These outputs produced full-length IgG, or antibody fragments, including single-chain FE and VHH nanobodies. We also used multiple discovery platforms, including B-cell, hybridoma, and phage display, to generate the broadest possible panel of antibody candidates. Since no one platform is universally the best, we used all of them, knowing that their complementary use would cover any blind spots inherent to each platform. This would give us the highest possibility of converging upon uniquely differentiated leads and provide opportunities for diagnostic and reagent tools. Instead of fast tracking our best antibody for a monotherapy, our goal was to combine our best antibodies into therapeutic cocktails because combination therapies have been shown to be exceptionally effective and provide a more durable protection against infectious diseases such as Ebola. This is because single antibody treatments, even potently neutralizing ones, are vulnerable to being escaped by a single point mutation in the virus if it occurs at a critical residue. And since viruses mutate rapidly, this is a serious limitation of monotherapy. To overcome the ongoing threat of an ever-evolving virus, combination therapy is more effective because the use of multiple antibodies can broaden the epitope coverage of the viral protein, reducing the risk of mutagenic escape and engaging multiple mechanisms of action to increase clearance by more efficient opsonization. And some antibody combinations can unlock synergistic effects that boost their potency beyond that achieved by their individual components. The modular format of our phage output also made it particularly amenable to bispecific formation to allow for pairings of different functional epitopes into a single molecule. The enormous possibilities in cocktail formation also allows for tailoring cocktails as needed to respond to emergent variations of the virus. We call our approach polytope and it provides a template workflow for addressing other infectious diseases. Let's start with a simplified summary of our workflow that enabled us to generate tens of thousands of clones by our complementary discovery platforms running in parallel. We deeply screened the outputs from all sources using various high throughput methods such as ELISA, HTRF or homogeneous time resolved fluorescence and BLI or biolayer interferometry using the Octet HTX. In these assays, we screened against a panel of recombinant proteins, including the fully assembled spike trimer, S1 and S2 subunits, the receptor binding domain, N-terminal fragment, mutants, and spike proteins from related viruses. Around a thousand clones with diverse binding properties were further analyzed in a cell-based pseudovirus neutralization assay. Guided by our function-first approach, we triaged to a panel of about 160 diverse candidates. 
This slide speaks to the sequence diversity that was produced from our function first approach to triaging, enabling us to identify a panel of exceptionally diverse clones, including our therapeutic leads, along with options for reagents and diagnostics. We performed extensive biophysical characterization on this set of clones. I'd like to share with you some examples from our rabbit B cell campaign because it produced a rich diversity in epitope coverage and generated some potent neutralizers that could be detected directly from the crude B cell supernatant. We identified high affinity clones with diverse binding kinetics as shown on the left by the octet based sensorgrams. Using high throughput antibody competition experiments, also known as epitope binning assays, we clustered the antibodies into epitope families or bins and found nuanced variations of many of these. Several clones across different epitope bins showed potent neutralization in a cell based pseudovirus assay, giving potencies similar to known benchmark antibodies when tested in the same assay. When we paired two highly potent rabbit antibodies that targeted non-overlapping bins and tested them as a two antibody cocktail, they didn't show any improved potency, suggesting that they were not able to synergize with one another. Overall, we found that epitope mattered since the most potent neutralizers were not necessarily the highest affinity clones and the ACE2 blockade did not guarantee neutralization. Indeed, neutralization was not limited to one epitope bin, allowing for many opportunities in combining antibodies into cocktails. In the antibiotics literature, combination therapies that work synergistically are well documented and effectively boost protection against bacterial infections more than the sum of their individual parts. This phenomenon has also been reported for antibodies against toxins and infectious diseases, with notable examples being botulinum and Ebola. Synergistic effects can produce potent neutralization at lower antibody concentrations than would be needed for a single antibody, so can be advantageous therapeutically because they open the possibility for lower dosing, which can improve safety. The key to unlocking synergistic effects is to combine antibodies that target non-overlapping epitopes. But as I showed in the previous example, this does not guarantee the synergistic effect, so must be determined empirically. Guided by our epitope binning data, we focused on a small panel of about 20 fully human leads and performed neutralization assays with them using a combinatorial pairwise strategy at multiple concentrations in a checkerboard layout. The complexity of these matrices increases quickly beyond a pairwise exploration. So we used the pairwise synergies to inform our design of higher order cocktails. While the SCFE format of our human clones had been convenient for early triage, we reformatted our leads into a full length IgG backbone and purified them by gel filtration to ensure that only the highest quality material was analyzed in our neutralization assays to remove any confounding effects from aggregation. Like before, we sorted our antibodies into epitope families to guide compatible pairings for testing in the neutralization assay. Our focus panel of leads therefore contained not only our most potent neutralizers, but antibodies from other bins targeting non-overlapping epitopes, even if they did not neutralize individually. We rigorously tested many pairwise combinations and found examples of synergy, indifference and antagonism as shown in these graphs where the black data points represent a single antibody and the blue data points represent different pairwise combinations. Identifying synergistic pairs underpinned our design of higher order cocktails. Our goal was to combine as many antibodies as possible that could retain synergistic effects while broadening the aggregate epitope footprint and simultaneously engage multiple mechanisms of action. 
Here is an example of a couple of different three antibody cocktails that showed full neutralization beyond that achieved for a single antibody. Currently, our leads are being manufactured as stable CHO pools as we move forward with our IND enabling preclinical animal studies. One of our lead four antibody cocktails is scheduled for in vivo testing in the Syrian hamster disease model early next year, and we await structural data on several of our leads. In summary, I've shown you that our polytope approach has converged upon a diverse panel of antibodies against SARS-CoV-2, targeting multiple non-overlapping epitopes, and we have benchmarked them against clinical leads and other structurally defined antibodies in the literature. Besides our fully human therapeutic leads, we have a robust collection of high quality antibodies that could serve as reagents or diagnostic tools. In parallel with the discovery of our polytope antibody-based therapeutic cocktail, we've developed a protein-based vaccine guided by our in-depth surveillance of the epitope landscape produced from our polytope antibody therapy program. We designed fragments of the spike protein that encompass numerous critical epitopes eliciting neutralizing antibodies. We opted for a protein-based approach instead of a peptide one to preserve native folding of the target to ensure its biological relevance, which appeared to be important given our lead antibodies bind confirmationally sensitive epitopes and do not recognize peptides. Our leads thus serve as tools for verifying the conformational integrity of our produced fragments. In collaboration with the Dutch company Lightvax and enabled by a European funded Transvax study, we immunize pigs with our fragments and Lightvax's adjuvant and have completed preclinical testing of the pig sera and observed reactivity. We're planning to scale up manufacture of our lead fragment to enable clinical trials. In conclusion, IPA's core strengths lie in the breadth of antibody discovery platforms that we offer, our end-to-end -end services that enable us to take a project from concept to the clinic, and our scientific rigor. We believe that antibody cocktail therapies will play a pivotal role in combating COVID-19, and our polytope approach provides enormous possibilities for plug-and-play cocktails to address current and emergent variations of SARS-CoV-2. The polytope concept can also be deployed as a template for addressing other infectious diseases. We have aligned with key partners to enable this work. To learn more about our COVID-19 program and our services, please visit our website at immunoprecise.com. Thank you very much for your attention.